All right, so we're going to start talking about combinations and permutations, which are two different ways of counting outcomes. So a permutation, as you see here, just starting at the top, is an ordering of objects. Okay, so basically I'm selecting a bunch of objects and I'm putting them in order. And every time I switch the order of even just two of the elements, it's considered to be a different permutation. So little theorem here, there are n factorial permutations or orderings of n objects or elements. So this means if you want to arrange n objects in line, there's going to be n factorial ways of arranging them. So just as an example, you want to visit eight different cities in France. How many ways are there to visit the cities if you don't visit any more than once? So basically we have a task that has eight steps in it. And if I want to choose the first city in France, I have eight choices. Then once I visited one, I only have seven choices left and six and five and four and three and two until I'm forced to go to that last city that we might not have wanted to go to. And since this is a task with eight steps, we multiply the number of ways to do each step. And this is eight factorial, which I believe ends up being 40,320. So there we have that. Now, circular permutations are something a little bit different. So imagine that you are sitting around a table with three other people, let's say. So keep it small. So we have person one, person two, person three, person four. Well, if I rotate everybody clockwise by one, let's say, this is gonna be A1, A2, A3, and A4. Well, that's considered to be the same circular permutation as the previous one because you're still relative to each other. You're still sitting in the same place. So the question is, or the answer, or the number of ways is, now the theorem says there's n minus 1 factorial ways of getting that. Let's just see how we get there. So we know that there's n factorial ways of lining people up in order in a line. Now, let's say that c is the number of circular permutations there are. And just realize here with our example, with four people, there's four different ways to arrange the people in the same order, okay? So with n people, there's going to be n ways of ordering them in the same order, which means the number of circular permutations is n factorial divided by n, which remember properties of factorials. I know that n factorial is n times n minus one times all the numbers down to two and one. So the n's cross out and we're left with n minus one factorial. So that's circular permutations. So just as a quick example, the number of ways to seat 11 people around a circular table is 10 factorial, which is 3,628,800. Okay, so the real, I, the real deal here is permutations of subsets. So looking at this definition here, an ordering of R elements taken from a group of N elements. So let's say that this is your group of N elements and I'm just gonna draw a bunch of different dots to represent the different elements. And let's say I'm only focused, I wanna grab a subset of them, so a smaller group. So notice that the inequality says that R is less than or equal to N. This is called an R permutation. So the theorem says the number of R permutations of a set of N distinct objects is, now note the notation. We use the word P for permutations of n objects taken r at a time, and this is the formula. Now, I'm not going to necessarily prove the formula, but I am going to show you the reason behind it, okay? So, just to understand, let's say we have eight objects, and I want to select three of them. We know we have eight choices for the first, seven for the second, six for the third. Now, while we can compute this pretty easily, you know, eight times seven times six is 336, let's try to find a more elegant way so we can come up with a formula in general. And the thing to notice here is, if I keep multiplying, so I'm just gonna take eight times seven times six, if I keep multiplying numbers all the way down to one, and again, whatever I do in the numerator, I have to do in the denominator, or if I multiply, I have to make sure I divide back to keep the number the same, 
This is now 8 factorial over 5 factorial. So what do those numbers mean? Well, 8 is the number of items that I was picking from, which was the n. So the 8 factorial is the n factorial. 5 factorial is the difference between the number of objects I have and the number of objects I'm selecting. So this 5 is the 8 minus 3. So that is how to do permutations of our objects. So let's look at a couple more examples. How many three-letter words can be formed from the letter A, B, C, D, E, F if repetition is not allowed? So basically what I'm doing, I'm picking three letters out of the six that are there, and I'm putting them in some kind of order. A, B, C, A, B, D, E, D, C, E, F, D, things like that. So you could do this the old-fashioned way by saying, well, if I have three blanks, that means I have six for the first, five for the second, four for the third, which does turn out to be 120. Or you could say, you could say P63, which would be six factorial over three factorial. Now on your calculator, you can calculate factorials or you can just go six times five times four times three times two times one. I just happen to know that six factorial is 720 and three factorial is six. And that gives us 120 either way. So you can always go back to fundamental counting principle if you want to, at least when order matters. When we get to combinations, we're not going to be able to do so that easily. Now, this problem is a little bit trickier. So let's just see what we're up to here. In how many ways can eight men and 12 women sit in a row at the theater if two men will not sit next to each other? So we want to make sure the guys don't sit next to each other. So here's what we're going to do. Step one, we're going to seat the women. Now, that means that at each woman is going to have at most one seat in between them. So I'm going to write down the 12 women right here. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, where can the men sit? Well, in any one of these spaces, in between the women or on one side of one of the other women. Now... This means that the men have 13 spaces to choose from. And how many are going to get chosen? Eight will get chosen. So what does this mean? So to seat the women, well, that can be done in 12 factorial ways. To seat the men, that's permutations of 13 spaces, but we're only filling eight. So that means the number of ways to do this entire experiment is the number of ways to seat the women times the number of ways to seat the men. And that answer is, it's huge. I know that for sure. So if I do 12 math... Uh, PRB factorial times 13, uh, yeah, math PRB factorial divided by, now, 13 minus 8 is 5, so that's 5 math PRB factorial. And, yeah, we get that number. So this is 2.48, I'll just call it 6, times 10 to the 16th. Of course, there's more decimal places there, but... The, this calculator just doesn't write them. So there's some example permutation and well permutation problems so far. In the next video, we'll look at combinations, which means if I select objects out of a larger group, maybe I don't care about the order. Maybe I just care about the different sets. So that's going to be our next feat. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.
right, so this is going back to the Best Buy. I'll do that after my payment. While I'm out, just get it all done. Is this the, oh God, what? Let's see where he was from.
All right, time to get that ready to go. I, yeah, that's probably my Amazon stuff.
All right, let's get dressed.